Dear friends and colleagues, welcome back to the Mangano Digital Academy and to the essential of digital dentistry. Let's uh, again talk about Combin Computer Tomography because it's a very important uh, device for the acquisition of uh, 3D data of the bone and teeth are tissues of our patients. And uh, it is uh, the, one of the most important devices in, in, in the whole workflow, in particular in the scan phase. Uh, Today we will talk about uh, um, CBCT uh, from another perspective that is much more clinical uh, and we will focus our attention on the patient positioning because it's a very important topic that sometimes is uh, not considered enough but there are studies that uh, are emerging on this topic and uh, there are also different possibilities on the, on the market with a different machine. So let's talk about once again the scan phases. Let's talk about uh, Combin Computer Tomography. Uh, as I told in the previous lecture, Combin Computer Tomography is a game changer in the, in the modern dental clinic. It's uh, one of the, the door to the digital dentistry. It appeared in the late 90s and it revolutionized completely the way we acquire data from our patient, opening the, the, the door to the 3D, 3D world to the third dimension. And it's not surprising that these machines now are spreading all around the world and they are almost in all dental offices because they can change dramatically the way in which we make our diagnosis and also we can uh, in the way in which we, we, we plan the treatment of our patient. So uh, what is the best patient positioning during the CBCT scan according to the literature at least and, and from the clinician perspective? Uh, from the clinician perspective, actually, uh, CBCT units can be categorized according to the field of view, of course, the functionality, the detector type, uh, all these characteristics are important, but the patient positioning also is quite important because the patient can stay supine, can sit, or uh, we, we can have patients standing uh, during the, the CT scan. So we have different options, obviously. And uh, at the very beginning with the first uh, CBCT, uh, usually the, the, the patient was uh, in a supine uh, reclined position because the, the first CBCTs, they look like the, the medical CTs at the beginning. So this is one of, uh, example of one of the first CBCT available in, in North America uh, 20, 20 years ago. Uh, now that things changed a little bit because we have more options, of course, and uh, we can have uh, the patient uh, seated or standing. And uh, it is interesting because the, the unit uh, globally requires less space and they are more accessible and also easier to use. This is the CS9600 from Kestrin Dental. And, uh, this video show how it's uh, easy today to, to, to have a comfortable and stable positioning of our patient. It's very important to avoid movement of the patient during the CT scan because the movement of the patient results in a motion artifact and uh, this can impair and can jeopardize our ability to make the proper diagnosis, for example, particularly in case of small structures small endodontic lesions or periodontal lesion and so it's important to to have the, the the patient comfortable and the patient doesn't have to move and we have a lot of uh, different options now with the modern cbct the patient can 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 be standing but also sitting comfortably and the, the devices are now much more accessible than than in the past and um, the, there is the possibility also to control very well the patient during the scan, the, the positioning, and the, to control if there, uh, there is a, a movement during the scan. So it's, uh, this is a very important and, and very beneficial for our treatment. If we make an analysis of the literature, I, I found in this recent article that most of the CBCTs around the that are available in the market, uh, they have the patient standing, so in the, in the, in the position of the classic position of the, the panoramic uh, radiograph. Uh, in 17% of the machine, there's the option of having the patient seated, and only in 8% of the machine, we have the, the, the supine uh, recl reclined position. So it's not so popular now uh, compared to the beginning. The point is to avoid image artifacts. 
Uh, an image artifice is defined as a visualizer structure in the reconstructed data that is not present in the object under investigation, so in real. Uh, artifacts can be induced uh, in several ways and there are several kinds of artifacts. I will focus my attention only and mainly on motion artifacts, so in the, in the importance of proper patient positioning and in the importance of avoiding movement of the patient during the scan, because all these artifacts are, of course, uh, they, they can potentially jeopardize our diagnostic capability, but uh, the motion artifacts are the worst, you know, probably because they really can create a situation that make not possible to, 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 uh, for us to make the proper diagnosis and particularly to proceed with some treatment, like for example, guided implant surgery. When the patient is not correctly immobilized during the CBCT scan, so motion artifacts can occur. Patient movement usually presents itself uh, uh, as a stripe-like and or ring-like pattern. So we can have double contour for the, for the teeth, uh, lack of sharpness, and uh, clearly this uh, can uh, cause image blurring or an unclear margin of anatomical structure and uh, there is obviously a, a problem with landmark identification that is a big issue for diagnosis but also for treatment planning. As I told you, guided surgery is the most important application in this case that can suffer very much from motion artifacts. And this is an example of a motion artifact when the patient is not correctly positioned then it, it can move and uh, or she can move and this is a problem because as you can see the quality the overall quality of the of the radiograph can decrease and uh, i have considered some uh, article in the literature about motion artifacts and i found that uh, the prevalence is quite high even if the machine now are very i mean uh, much easier to use and they are more comfortable for the patient and they have a lot of possible solution but anyway there's a prevalence that is quite high and uh, the, the, the patient movement uh, is uh, a really big problem and uh, in this uh, uh, literature review the, the authors found that uh, particularly with young patients or children we can have a problem during the examination when, the, uh, when there's the need to, to scan the children. And um, there, there is another study that I found very interesting, this one, the, the study compared by, by um, this group of researchers, compared the three different uh, machines with the patient standing, sitting or supine and the uh, occurrence of uh, motion artifacts. And they found that uh, there was uh, no statistically significant difference between the different positions, but the authors found that uh, um, the, the, the problem of motion artifacts can become uh, worse uh, in, uh, with age, so with the, for the older patients. So it's a conclusion that is quite different from the, the one of the previous uh, systematic review. And these tables come from that article. And we can see that, uh, yes, there's a high occurrence and prevalence of uh, motion artifacts. Uh, no differences between the different positions after all. Uh, but uh, the, the author considered a lot of uh, scan taken in a, in a long period of time, but they found that also the age of the patient can be a factor in the movement uh, because they, they found that uh, uh, patient with uh, uh, more than 50 years, they, they had this uh, problem more often than, than young patients. So from 18 to 49. So they didn't consider children and this may explain the difference from the previous uh, from the results of the previous systematic uh, review. Obviously, landmark identification is very important in uh, <coughs> bone and maxillofacial surgery and also in uh, implant surgery and particularly with some specific application like guided implant surgery because we can have a problem. This article is uh, also very interesting uh, because they, they say that the, there's a particular problem uh, considering the, the, the way the combined computer tomography uh, usually work, particularly when there is an horizontal uh, rotation of the head and particularly left side rotation, which is the opposite direction to the scanner rotation usually, because this uh, left side head rotation may influence the inconsistencies 
of pro projection data more than the, the right side at the rotation. This is interesting because uh, of course with the modern machine we can control uh, the, the patient and the, and the fact that the patient should be immobilized during the wall scan but uh, of course we can consider that if we have this kind of movement we can even have worse errors. Uh, when we talk about guided implant surgery of course we must be very careful because we are going to I mean design and, and fabricate and use a surgical guide that is created um, obviously on a set of 3D images and these three-dimensional images are images captured with the intraoral scanner but also images captured from a CBCT because we need the data of the bone um, under the tissues and we know that we have a problem in accuracy with guided surgery from a lot of different uh, systematic and literature review we can have deviation with the conventional guides that can be up uh, than one millimeter, so 1.39 millimeter, according to this work of uh, Professor Thomas Ebb, uh, as a deviation in the apex, uh, one and 12 deviation in the shoulder. So quite important linear deviation and also important angular deviation among the planet position in the software and the actual position of the implant. So if there are deviations, there are errors during the workflow and these errors can occur, of course, during the different phases. So during the scanning phase, the design of the guide, the fabrication of the guide, and then the surgery itself. <clears throat> and this graph to summarize a little bit uh, the most important errors uh, that can occur. And the first one is motion artifact with combined computer tomography. So if we have a motion artifacts in combined computer tomography, we should not proceed with guided implant surgery. So there are some systems, for example, this Twingis system, uh, Twin Guide, Twingis, that uh, <coughs> use uh, a reference. And uh, this reference, a Lego brick, is very useful to control not only the superimposition between the different scans, the scan of the model and the scanning during the CBCT, but also it's very useful to control if the patient has moved during the exam or not. So if the, the Lego brick is perfectly represented during the CBCT, because it's also radio pack and it's very precise, and we can superimpose to, to this uh, Lego brick the the original file, the, the design, the computer assisted design of that uh, uh, Lego brick, then we can proceed with uh, our surgery because we know that we didn't have any motion artifact and any distortion. But if the patient move, we have motion artifacts, then we can control it. And if the Lego brick is totally, I mean, distorted, then we can proceed with the planning. We need to be very careful because if we proceed, if we go on, we can make big mistakes after all during the surgery. I show you a simple case made uh, um, on, on, on the concept uh, of uh, two appointments. So the first is uh, combing computer tomography and intraoral scan, first appointment. Then we have all the plan. We, we can fabricate our surgical templates, the 3D printed model. We can check the accuracy and then we can proceed with surgery. And it's quite easy. So we use a CS3700 for the intraoral scan of the patient in this partially dentulous patient, very easy case. Then a combined computer tomography, and it's very important to avoid any possible motion artifact. So once again, the devices that are available now, they allow us to control uh, the position of the patient, and it's very important. Then we can put together the information coming from the intraoral scanner with that, the information coming from the combined computer tomography with the merging, and then we can proceed with our implant planning. I think it's also very important to consider the, the, the merging of the file, because if the file don't merge perfectly, we need to consider, we, we should uh, check this, uh, I mean, uh, congruence among the, the, the information coming from the intraoral scanner and the information coming from combined computer tomography. We should check this congruence in all possible multiplanar reconstruction uh, because it's another way to test and to check if we have or not, hopefully not, motion artifacts. Because if we have motion artifacts with combined computer tomography, probably the intraoral scan will not uh, overlap perfectly. So it's another aspect that must be considered, not only, of course, the implant planning, the work according to the workshop and the available bone, 
This is basically uh, the diagnostic waxing, the prosthetically guided implant placement. These are well established concepts in terms of, uh, of course, computer guided surgery, computer assisted surgery. In this case, I use this software SMOP that is very, I mean, interesting because it's parametric. And uh, after the plan has been uh, made, then you can uh, export all the position. And uh, what I do is basically I design my guide, in this case, a, a set of hypno guides uh, for the different drills. And uh, I'm ready to proceed with, uh, with the surgery. And uh, these guides have the characteristic of being uh, um, um, composed by a, a a very simple structure connected with a cylinder and this cylinder uh, is absolutely um, uh, the perfect way to guide the drill because uh, the cylinder has the perfect height for those specific drill and the perfect diameter so there's no need to use long drills there's no need to use uh, stops uh, there's no need to use reducer for the diameter everything is uh, customized and these guides are this is the sequence of guides for this very easy case Sim single implant these guides are uh, the hypno guide they are uh, laser centered one piece and they are four sequential absolutely identical in in the, in the shape with the only difference of the all of the diameter that needs to, to, to guide the, the drill and uh, the guided surgery proceeds very easy and fast uh, with uh, the surgeon that can uh, the surgeon can open the flap uh, because the the stabilization of the guide is given by the teeth but at the same time by the bone because that cylinder is uh, exactly segmented over the bone so once again if we perform segmentation in smoke and it's possible we can export the position of the bone we need to be careful not to have any motion artifact because otherwise probably our, our process of uh, planning will fail. And this is how it works. It's only a computer assisted procedure. It's absolutely easy. The preparation is uh, performed through the guide and then the position of the implant. If there's no need, you know, like in this case of uh, immediate loading, we can uh, place the implant without any, any index or not through the guide. And this is the final result of the, of the surgery. Very easy and fast. And obviously it's very important to be assisted during the, the, the positioning of the patient because uh, if we can check that no movement occur during the exam, then we have a, a big advantage. And with the modern machine like the CS9600, it is possible to uh, precisely position the patient inside the machine and then to check during all the scan phase the immobilization of the patient. The patient doesn't have to move. And we have artificial intelligence tool that can help us, of course, like you can see here, to check uh, that everything goes well and to obtain perfect images uh, every single time. So the conclusions. During the combined computer tomography, uh, despite of the position of the patient, we have different articles talking about the supine position, the, the patient sitting, the patient standing. But the point is that we absolutely need to minimize patient movements in order to avoid the occurrence of motion artifacts. Uh, motion artifacts, in fact, can affect deeply, can deeply affect and jeopardize our capability to, to, to make the proper diagnosis and then to plan our treatment. Well, for example, in guided implant surgery is very delicate. We need to avoid motion artifacts absolutely. And the modern computer tomography, they help us a lot because uh, they offer different valid and reliable solutions. For example, the CS9600, the patient can stand or the patient, if, if the patient is old, for example, uh, um, he can sit. And we know that the patient uh, over 50 years old from some literature studies, they more often move during the combined computer tomography. And the fact that they sit may help a little bit to avoid this, uh, to, to reduce this risk and to, to avoid the occurrence of motion artifacts. So it's most very important to obtain high quality images at first try in order to not give another dose to the patient because we had some movement and some motion artifacts. This is key particularly in surgery, but in all application of the combined computer tomography. So thank you very much for your attention. And don't forget, if you have some questions, some criticisms, some comments, to write me. 
hear my email. Thank you.